Hello students, good afternoon to every one of you who are logging in for this particular tutorial video today. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Akin, your math instructor. And of course, we are back at it again with another tutorial for this particular weekend. We are, we are going to be focusing on direct and indirect proportion. This is a topic that is algebra based and it's also an applied concept to which you are going to be learning how to use this particularly in topics like ratio and also in topics like consumer arithmetic when it comes to talking about sales tax and discount inclusive there are many other aspects of math in which direct and indirect proportion plays an important role but it's most important that we get an idea a concept behind its application of course direct and indirect proportion is more or less the same as direct and indirect variation so there are going to be different aspects or different ways how the questions are stated in order for you to actually uh, get a chance to apply the concepts in future lessons all right so of course if this is the first time here on the channel i do provide contents from the curriculum of csec cc slc sca ed excel exams but primarily i focus on csec and I also offer practice paper solutions, all the information you require in order to join my online classes on a weekly basis can be found in the description box below. So do definitely go ahead and check that out. All my social media handles and contact details are in the description below. All right, so let's get into today's lesson here. Of course, this is particularly uh, learning the language of the universe. And I try to make the learning process for math concepts as easy and as interesting as possible. So let's get into it. Now, particularly, we like to start off learning any concept in math with definitions. It's very, very important that we learn about definitions. Having an intuitive understanding of the concept really helps a student to know how to apply the concept. So firstly here, let us start off by defining what is direct and indirect proportion. And as you can see here that it states that direct and indirect proportion are two different proportional relationships. There are two ways in which quantities are related to each other. Now, for direct proportion, what we're looking at is that there, it's a relationship between two quantities such that if when one quantity increases in value, so does the other quantity. And it not just applies to the fact that the quantity increases in value, but it also applies to the fact that if the quantity decreases in value. So basically, what I like to do for my students is, let's say then that we have two particular quantity here, right? And let's say that one of the quantity goes, say, increase, then you're going to find that the other quantity also travels in the same direction or if another quantity say decreases then the other quantity also decreases okay now let's look at an example let's look at an intuitive example of what i'm talking about it says here for example the cost of a banana is 70 pence okay now as the number of bananas increase okay so does the cost will increase and you guys have experienced this on a daily basis where you're purchasing one particular item and it has a particular value and if you choose to buy more of that item then of course it's going to cost you more so three bananas would cost three times the amount 
that one causes cost so therefore the answer for that intuitively would have been two um two pounds and ten pence all right or it could be two dollars and ten cents depending on the currency that you are using okay so hopefully that's a kind of a, a good understanding of what we mean by direct proportion now if y varies okay so if y is directly proportional to x then we kind of use this symbol here this fish looking symbol okay and so that is the variation or the direct um relationship between two variables now particularly for the csec level we tend to always use y and x as our uh, examples for our questions but of course there can be many relationships formed between various letters um, depending on the uh, depending on the angle from which it is that we are bringing the question to you so then if it is a direct proportion then we tend to use this formula here y is equal to k multiplied by x now k is an important value and it's a value that you must find before you move forward at least you're not able to move forward unless you are able to attain the value for k now what exactly is k k is the constant of proportionality or k is the constant of variation depending on you know if it's proportional or variation that we're talking about but you're more or less the same all right now what i like to tell my students is to have an intuitive understanding of what k is when you find k what exactly are you finding well you basically find well basically you are finding one the value of one amount or one share so take for example you are a retailer or you're selling something maybe you're selling something in the market or maybe you're selling clothes or you're selling something and you are purchasing this particular item here in bulk now it is important for a salesperson to estimate how much it is that they have paid for one of the items to which they have bought so once they're able to attain the value for what is it that they have bought then obviously they will be able to know whether to mark up or mark down the price in order to make a profit or incur a loss so k is basically finding one amount now there is a step-by-step -step guide in order for us to learn how to solve direct proportionality questions or inverse proportionality questions but before we get into the whole steps let's have a look here at the for the information about indirect proportion indirect proportion which is otherwise known as inverse proportion is a relationship between two quantities where when one quantity increases in value the other quantity decreases in value and vice versa all right so of course if one quantity decreases in value then the other one will increase in value now what we're looking at then is this here let's see one quantity increases in value then the other quantity is going to go down by the constant of proportionality all right and then if one quantity decreases in value then the other one is going to increase in value by the constant of proportionality so the constant of proportionality k is what's causing that increase or decrease okay let's take for example here and we're not really doing any working out in a moment in part two of this video to which i'm going to be doing we're going to be looking at some exam structure type questions and then we, before we actually look at exam structure type questions we're going to be experimenting a little bit by using the formulas okay so here for example it takes one worker nine hours to dig a hole right when you're doing these type of worded problems guys you have to first read the question to wrap your minds around what the question really is saying by reading the question you can be able to determine whether you're using direct or indirect proportion now it takes one worker 
uh, as it says here, nine hours to dig a hole. So here are the first two quantities, the relationship between the worker and the amount of hours taken to do this particular task, which is to dig a hole. Now, if you were to increase, say, the number of workers, then obviously you have more persons working for you. So if the constant of proportionality remains constant, then it means that the number of hours that it will take to dig that hole will obviously decrease. So therefore, three workers will take three times less or one third less than the time it took one worker to do the job. If it is that that is understandable, ensure that you hit that like button if you're getting some value from the explanation so far. So the first part of this video is going to be mostly wrapping your minds around the, the, the concepts, okay? So here we go. Now, to calculate indirect proportion problems, we need to appreciate that multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other. Indirect is sometimes known as inverse variation as was already mentioned before and so therefore with indirect variation or proportion okay I'm going to be using the word interchangeably because they are the same if if y is indirectly proportional to x then again that symbol here y equals 1 over x then in this case here the constant of proportionality is one, but it doesn't always is one, okay? Then we simply use the formula here. Since the constant of proportionality can change, we simply use the letter K to represent our constant of proportionality. So that is the formula here that we use Y is equal to K divided by X, all right? So we have two formulas so far. Let's just rewrite them. We have direct variation or proportionality which in this case here is y is equal to k multiplied by x and we have inverse or indirect indirect proportionality idp that's equal to y equal k divided by x bear in mind that k is an important value to which you must obtain all right now how to use direct and indirect proportion in order to answer worded problems involving direct and inverse proportion the following steps must be applied and so here they are it says here that the very first thing once it is that you have established once it is that you are you have recognized pardon me that you are dealing with a proportionality question or a variation question you have to be able to intuitively figure out what type of proportionality relationship are between the quantities it's, is it a direct proportionality relationship or is the inverse proportionality relationship between the quantities if you're successful in doing that then of course your next task is to calculate the constant of proportion remember we said that for a salesman to mark up or mark down his price he must establish what it is that the cost of the item was to him for one what was the cost of one item what is it that he paid for one of his item that he was buying now of course you have to calculate the value of k well in fact you have to calculate the constant of proportionality then depending on what the question requires you have to calculate calculate the, the, the next unknown value and of course you have to write out your solution all right now throughout the examples that i'm going to be going through both in part one and part two i'll be re-emphasizing the application of these three steps or four steps here all right now i have a bunch of questions here obviously i'm not going to be going through all of them but i would recommend that you take a screenshot or you can of course email me uh you can find my email address in the description box below i can forward this exact document to you where you can actually get some time to practice or easiest just screenshot and send your solutions to my 
uh, social one of my social media handles I will respond to you in terms of your solution so I'm gonna pick just some random ones nothing too saucy just pick some random question we're gonna start off easy we're gonna start off with that easy direct proportion question I'm gonna start off with an easy indirect proportion question okay so of course let's just start off with number one here now it did say here that y varies directly proportional or y is indirect is directly proportional to x okay so right away you've got no clue that it's a direct proportionality relationship so we can go ahead here and see one here let's just use a better okay all right so we can start off by saying y is equal to k multiplied by x okay now notice here now that you are often and you will always be given two initial values of x and y in order for you to obtain the constant of proportionality which is k so of course they said that y here is 4 and x is also 4 let's have a look at this y is 4 and say here k is unknown and x is 4 this works out to be a very easy one here okay so here if we want to get rid of the 4 or we want to isolate k then we simply divide both sides of the equation by 4 and then of course 4 cancels 4 so therefore we are then we are then seeing that k here is equal to one okay so this is an easy question just to get started just for you to feel a bit comfortable here k works out to be one now we are very interested here in finding what out what is the value of y this time x is seven so i strongly recommend that you always rewrite your formula so y equals k multiplied by x so therefore when y is seven Okay, let's double check that it says when y is okay it says find y when x is 7 so therefore then y is unknown and k easily is 1 and x here is 7 so this is 1 multiplied by 7 and that works out to be 7 okay and I know this question is very very easy but it doesn't matter what the value of k is it will be applied in the same manner okay all right let's do another direct proportion question here but this time here let's look at the fact that k might be a bigger number other than say here one okay let's take on say for example here number two all right so here we have say here y all right, just a second guys all right here we go so now we have y is directly proportional to x this time y is 72 and x is 6 so as usual we have recognized here the relationship between the variables which is directly proportional and we are we have of course been given two initial values of x and y so therefore then let's rewrite our formula we have number two here y equals k multiplied by x so they've said here that y is 72 and x is 6 so 72 equals k multiplied by 6 okay all right so therefore then same as before 72 divided by 6 on both sides divide by 6 because we want to isolate k then you're gonna find here that 6 cancels 6 so 6 divides into 72 therefore you'll find here that k is equal to 12 okay beautiful so once you've established your constant of proportion we return to rewriting our formula so that's y equal k multiplied by x let's see what they're asking us to find here they're asking us here to find y then when x is equal to 9 when x is equal to 9 so therefore find y and k is say 12 
an XC9 and then easily here we work out that y is equal to 108 all right so that is basically a uh, introduction to the application of the formula those steps that we have taken we have identified the relationship between the variables we have calculated the constant of proportion we have found the unknown quantity that you're asking us to find and we have written our solution that is it there all right now you guys can of course take on question three question four and so on you can have fun with those now let's move on to a different variation in terms of the quantities it's very important that you understand that in the introduction phase of this you have to also expect that not only can the change not only can the relationship between the letters change but the relationship between the variables can also change so what we're looking at here is take for example here number five y varies directly or y is directly proportional to x squared okay so we know it's direct so what i do recommend that you do is write your original formula your original formula as you've been seeing in question one and two is y equals k multiplied by x now there's going to be a slight adjustment because it's no longer that y varies directly as x but y varies directly as x squared so by adjusting the formula here we have y equal k multiplied by x squared so we have an adjustment in our formula let's go right ahead and plug some values in of course we know that we need to obtain the value of k so therefore then if y is 252 so that's 252 and k is unknown but in this case here x is equal to 6 we can go ahead and square the 6 because it's x squared so that's 252 is equal to k multiplied by 36 so if we grab our calculators and we were to see 252 divided by 36 we're gonna find that k here okay so that's 252 divided by 36 and of course you know that the 36 is going to disappear okay then you'll find that he k here is equal to 7 so then of course let's go ahead and try to find the unknown value by rewriting our formula here k, k y is equal to k multiplied by x squared you'll find here that they say at the top question five here that uh, uh let's see here when find y when x is equal to two find y when x is equal to two so y is equal to k is 7 and x is they say is 2 okay let's double check that guys x is 2 right here x is 2 so that's going to be 2 squared so you're going to find here that y works out to be 7 multiplied by 4 so y works out here to be 28 all right so you'll see here that in my first three introduction examples that of course you can get various answers all right and it's not limited to just whole numbers this is just basically an introduction i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna do question say here six and i'm gonna do question 12 so that you guys can have an understanding of the switch up okay because so far our first three examples here have demonstrated us asking you to find the value of uh, find the value of y but then what happens then if they ask us to find the value of x let's first do question 4 then question 6 then question 12 and that should give you a fairly good idea of the switch up that can take place in these particular problems all right so hopefully you guys have the solutions here I'm gonna be leaving the space okay I do strongly recommend though guys that if you want you can pause the video and work out the questions make an attempt to work out the questions and of course 
unpause the video to see if my solution matches yours all right so let's take on then question four switching up a little bit here we have y varies or y is in directly pardon me guys I, I will use the word varies or the word directly proportional interchangeably okay but it's the same thing so y is directly proportional to x so let's write our formula then y is directly proportional to x so that's y equal k multiplied by x okay and then here what we're looking at then is the fact that there is no changes it's directly proportional to x there's no changes on the x y is equal to 90 and x is equal to 9 so y is 90 so that's 90 obviously we do not know what k is and x is in fact 9 so therefore naturally then by now if we divide both sides by 9 then you're gonna find that k here works out to be 90 divided by 9 10 of course we're gonna rewrite our formula again the more you rewrite the formula is the more it will stick I do have a lot of students that have a little bit of problem when it comes to remembering the formulas so the more you do these questions and the more you practice is the easier it will be for it to stick so then what is y then are they asking us for y let's see they are in fact asking us for x so find x now when y is 10 so this time now y is 10 here and k is 10 and x here is unknown so it's a little bit slight different setup okay okay because the last time all we had to do was just multiply to get our value of y but now we're looking for x now we have to divide so 10 divided by 10 here is equal to say here x so x works out here to be 1 nice so that brings us to the solution that we're looking for okay all right so then let's look at one more direct variation question here direct variation or direct proportion okay in fact yes let's have a look at it together again number six directly proportional to x cube be careful of that so y is equal to k multiplied by x cube okay ensure that when you're reading the question you look to see if there's a relationship formed between them so here we have y okay let's look at what the values are it says y is 56 so here 56 here k obviously is unknown by now you'll realize that in the start of your question or the start of your work you know k is always unknown and say here x is 2 so that's 2 and we're gonna cube the 2 so that's 56 equals k multiplied by 2 cubes is 8 that is 2 times 2 times 2 so 7 8 is 56 therefore if we divide both sides by 8 gonna find that k here works out to be 7 because 7 8 is 56 again rewrite our formula y is equal to k multiplied by x cube what are they asking us to find here they are in fact asking us to find x again so find x now when y is 189 so 189 for y and k obviously here is 7 multiplied by x cube so we have an additional step here to take not only do we have to get rid of the 7 from beside the x which naturally we know now to divide both sides by 7 then once you divide 189 by 7 you should get an answer of 27 and then how do we actually get rid of the cube from beside or above the x well naturally the opposite of cubing a number is cube rooting the number so if we can cube root that is the button on the calculator with a three at the edge like this 
if we can cube the 27, cube root the 27, naturally if I cube root x cube, then the cube root will cancel the cube. So x then is equal to, on our calculator, the answer is going to be 3. Because 3 multiplied by itself 3 times gives us 27. So therefore then, we have a nice answer here of, see here, uh, 3. Alright? Nicely done. Okay? Now, we're going to be looking at then, so far we've been looking at direct variation. Let's then have a look at some examples then with inverse variation. We're going to start off with something simple and then we're going to jump to the advanced because the concept and the application is the same. So I'm going to say here, take on, hmm, let's take on here something that looks a bit challenging. Okay, so we're going to be doing question 9 as a start. I'm thinking, hey, let's do question 9 here as a start. And let's do question 11, maybe. And let's take on question 12. All right. Really want to go through a bunch of examples. I want to spend about 45 minutes with you here, guys, so that you guys can have a thorough understanding of this. This is, this is pretty much like your practice uh, session when you're at home. Okay. So I'm practicing with you guys. Let's get it. Let's go. Okay. So then Y varies inversely then as are inversely or, or is inversely proportional to x so then we need the formula y equals k divided by x always check though always check because sometimes you can misread or overread okay look to see if there's any changes in the x okay all right there is none so we leave our formula as is okay and say they say here y is 2 so 2 goes here okay k is obviously unknown and x in this case here is in fact say here seven okay so what happens then is a slightly different setup so how do we handle a situation then if you're an advanced student student it will obviously mean that you would have to cross multiply but i often tell my students that are a little bit disadvantageous when it comes to basic concepts in math that when the unknown variable is at the top of the equation then we simply multiply so then k then is equal to 2 multiplied by 7 k then works out to be 14 okay next we rewrite our formula y is equal to k divided by x we are not finished we've just established the value of k now we need to find x then when x is 7 find x when pardon me find x when y is 7 okay so y is 7 then and k works out here to be 14 and x obviously is unknown okay so then what happens then aha we can simply divide because now when the unknown variable is at the bottom of the equation then we can swap we can swap the position of the x and the 7. So the x will go where the 7 was. And the 7 will go where the x currently is. So that's 14 divided by 7. Okay. And that x is equal to 2. For those of you who are actually wondering. Is it possible to figure out the solution? Okay. Since x, since y is 2. And x works out to be 7. If we do a swap. Is it always the case? Well. I wouldn't go to the extent of having you guess the problem, no matter if it is that you know the answer or not for exam purposes, I believe that the solution is going to be required or the steps are going to be required to be shown. So yes, if you're smart enough and you know exactly what you're doing, then obviously you should be able to guesstimate the answer, but working out a few lines of math will not hurt you. Okay. All right, do not forget to hit the like button, guys. It does help the channel to grow. And if you are a student at any other institution other than mine, feel free to share the video to all your other friends. It does help the family, the channel to grow, and it obviously helps you to help someone else who is struggling with not only this aspect of math, but just math in general here, okay?
All right, let's do a question now with inverse variation, inverse proportion, where the variable is changing. So here we have y varies, aha, let's check. It varies inversely as x squared. Look out for this, guys. So it is k inversely divided by, instead of being x, it's going to be x squared. Okay, all right. So then y is 4 here, so y is 4 and k obviously is unknown and x then is 3 so that's 3 not just 3 but 3 squared again the unknown is at the top so what do we do guys we multiply that is correct so 4 multiplied by 3 squared that will give us the value of k again if you want to work out 3 squared put 9 that's also fine so that's 4 multiplied by 9 that gives us k therefore 36 is the value of k all right so now we're asked to find y then when x is 2 let's rewrite our formula y equals k divided by aha x squared Do not forget that square it's going to be important okay so find y then when x is in fact 2 so y then is equal to k, we just recognize is 36 and x in this case is 2. So we're going to be squaring the 2. Once again, there's another example where you could have actually guessed the result. So y is equal to 36 divided by 4. Aha, y is equal to 9. Okay, so really, really good there. Really, really good. All right, so I hope you guys are really getting the hang of this. Finally, I do have some students that have expressed to me that they are not a big fan of variation on proportion questions. But I hopefully after this tutorial, which you have chances to watch this over and over again, you should be a bit more comfortable with the application. Let us bring this particular session here to an end by saying here this last question y v is inversely proportional or y is inversely proportional pardon me to the square root of x let's pay attention to this particular sign here so not only is it of the inverse variation which is y equals k divided by x but it says the square root of x so we have to have that square root here okay let's write that a bit clearer so that's k divided by the square root of x so then then we have y equals 5 5 is equal to obviously k is unknown and x is 16 so then 5 is equal to k okay we've already worked out the square root let's put it here okay so that's the square root of 16 okay so 5 then is equal to k divided by the square root of 16 is in fact 4 so then again when the unknown is at the top we multiply that is correct so 5 times 4 is equal to k k works out to be equal to 20 okay so we rewrite our formula again by now guys you should catch the whole concept of the fact that why i'm asking to rewrite the formula because once you're being asked to find a new value for x or y is going to be a requirement okay so then what are we asked to find we're asked to find x and i'm very happy that they ask us to find x because this brings out something else that you need to know find x when y is four so then y is four and k have just been worked out to be 20 divided by the square root of x all right so it is this situation then that will confuse up some of my students and hopefully at this point you should know exactly what you need to do here we're going to be doing a swap okay we're going to be dividing so we're going to be having the square root replacing the 4 sorry the square root of x replacing the 4 and the 4 replacing the square root of x So then what do we have here is that the square root of x is equal to 5. Now, what happens now when you end up with a situation like this then? Well, 
earlier we had looked at the fact that to get rid of the cube we cube root now we're trying to get rid of the root so we have to raise it to its corresponding power now this is not a cube root this is a square root so this means then i would have to go ahead and i will have to say here square the square root of x And so, of course, we're going to have to go right ahead then and also square the other side. Okay. So what then happens now? What happens now is that the square here cancels the square root. X is now isolated. And so, therefore, X is equal to 25. So it's very important that you guys remember that the root removes the power and the power removes the root. Cube root removes a variable that is raised to the power of 3, square root removes a variable that is raised to the power of 2, and vice versa. All right, so you can see here that we went through quite a bunch of questions. I've left a few for you to try, not a lot, left about five maybe or six. I left about five, so I did five out of the 12, so I've left about seven for you to do. All right, have fun with those guys. Uh, let's see what's on the other page. Here's some apply. Okay, let's so let's just finish wrapping up these two questions here. So far, you'll see here that the questions are kind of very straightforward. But then, what happens now? Okay, what happens now when you give us questions like this one in words? Okay, do we approach the question the same way? Yes, we do. We do. Let's have a look at number one here before we bring this video to an end. 12 football players need to drink a total of 3 liters of water during a match. Now, how much water would be needed for 20 players during the same match? Let's first identify the relationship between the football players and the amount of water that needs to be drank. Okay, here we're looking at the fact that 12 players requires three liters of water obviously if you have more players you're obviously going to need more water so here we had a quantity okay 12 and 3 the amount of players increase so the amount of water to be consumed is going to also increase and based on the introduction to this video this is in fact a direct proportionality or a direct variation question okay so for proportion i tend to uh, well i'm going to do this problem two particular ways here okay just so you can have an understanding we can use the whole direct variation formula which is then y equals k multiplied by x and first we had 12 players needing three liters of water so therefore three liters of water so the players represent y and the amount of water represents x so what then what do we have if we divide both sides by three we're gonna find that the constant of proportionality here works out to be four so we rewrite our formula once again y is equal to k here multiplied by x this time they have 20 players so 20 players and the proportionality is equal to 4 multiplied by x so therefore then if we were to divide both sides here by say here 4 you will find that 5 liters of water is what will be needed to for 20 players for that same match all right so you could use that approach to get the question correct or you could simply do what i often tell my students when they recognize that it's a proportion rather than a variation question is they can write down what they know they can say that 12 players requires three liters i can obviously find out how long or how much players would need how much water would 12 players would one player need so 12 players would need three liters one player 
wouldn't need as much. So one player would need 3 divided by 12. Wouldn't need a lot of water. So therefore then, one player would require, let's see here, 0 0.25. Or we could just cancel this down and write it as a quarter. Okay, so 0 0.25. So therefore we have 20 players then. So 20 multiplied by 0 0.25. And you're going to also find here that your answer is 5 liters. So this is the approach that you use when it's direct proportion as opposed to direct variation. This is the direct variation application. But as I said, they are more or less the same. All right pick your poison guys all right now i'd love for you guys to go ahead and take a look at that particular question and of course hit me in my instagram facebook wherever it is that you're watching this video from and let me know what solutions you've got for those i'll be sure to respond to you all right so we are going to bring this particular tutorial part one to the end in part two we're going to be looking at a recap of what we did in this session and of course we're going to be looking at some exam structure type questions some other ones like what you're seeing popping up here on screen right they are more or less the same but they are more exam structure type these are the type of questions that you're going to see on exam all right so of course look out for that it will be posted in about two or three hours from after watching this one so until next time guys do take care and i'll see you in another tutorial keep on practicing with consistency and you will become a better math student um in no time all right until then take care do not forget to subscribe like and share Bye bye